all right everyone and welcome to the pop culture streets because this weekend they were so hot all of the streets were probably at coachella or were they because one of the things that are happening this year at coachella is that actually attendance has not been as crazy as it was before with being reported that it's actually one of the coachellas with the uh, lowest attendance in a very long time that doesn't mean that we're not people there. That place was full of people, you know. But if you really compare this year Coachella to like other ones before, you can feel the difference, you know. Uh, the stories of people feel different. The news out there feels different. And even though they're trying to do big things, it's definitely not hitting on the same um, the same way. I don't know. To be very honest with you, I have never been to Coachella, even though it's literally like two hours away from Los Angeles. Um, it's just like, to me, the whole thing of like camping and doing all of that really kind of like, I have never been like a camping person. So like, I don't know. And second of all, um, I don't know if, if you want to rent a house, you have to do it like a year before. I, I, it has never been like really appealing to me. You know, I love festivals and I have gone through other festivals before, but for some reason, Coachella, has never really caught my attention, but I, I like people really go crazy for it, you know? And I remember, for example, last year, it was like everywhere, everyone was talking about Coachella. You could not open, you know, your phone without seeing like all of these stories of people having fun and all of that, right? This year feels a lot different, you know? Not that many people are at Coachella and the stories are just so bland that it doesn't really seem exciting anymore. I don't know what really is going on, but still that doesn't mean that a lot of things uh, really happen uh, um, on Coachella, okay? So the first one that a lot of people were talking about was of course with Mr. Justin Bieber, Mr. Justin Bieber, you know, uh, because he was caught having this like little like um, flirtous moment with um, Jaden Smith, you know? And of course, I mean, I, I when I was reading some of these comments, you know, of all of the what people were saying, I was like, I don't know if this is like homophobic or like people being so like close minded, you know, because a lot of people were saying like, yes, whatever, have fun, you know. But there was a lot of comments of being like, oh, what is happening here? Why is why are they touching like that? Why are they kissing on the cheek? You know what it is and that. And I'm like. So many of these people doesn't have queer friends and it really shows, you know, <laughs> like it really shows out there because especially like, for example, uh, me, like and my husband, like, you know, we have like so many straight friends that we are just like having fun, you know, and being flirty here and there. And they actually like react to it in a funny way. And they, and we're all just having like, honestly innocent fun you know so when i was watching the video that's what it really come to me when you are like really friends with someone like that kind of thing like really happened you know and no one is really saying like oh i, I can already imagine like future headlines you know on being like oh justin bieber is just in the closet you know or like jane smith wants to like break the, <laughs> the marriage or something like that like that's how crazy people are over something so like innocent of, of like having you know giving a kiss on the cheek like on the cheek it wasn't like even on the mouth you know uh they were just having fun and it is what it is but that i think that's how this pop culture street works you know like you cannot see one little things because you are gonna like twist that narrative like there is no tomorrow okay they were just having fun they were just being innocent nothing is going on okay so guys kind of like uh, let it go for a second um of course uh there was a lot of talk about the reunion of no doubt like when stephanie was there it was like uh i think like eight or nine years since the last time you know um was it amazing and everything that we were expecting for no you know like let's be honest not a lot of people is really talking about this but you know it was pretty impressive for them to get back together for Coachella um what else happened taylor swift was there which of course this is this is why i was thinking that something must be going on because how is possible that taylor swift is there 
which you know Taylor Swift cannot give like walk one step without the world knowing and going crazy for it. But in this case, she was there with her boyfriend and it wasn't really that crazy. Like people were not even talking about Taylor Swift being at Coachella that much. You know? And like I, I I'm telling you, something is happening at Coachella this year. Something is going on. People are not reacting the same way as they were doing it before. All right? I think the only thing, honestly, that I saw about Taylor Swift was like the picture that she took with Teresa Judice from, you know, the Real House of New Jersey. But like, that was pretty much it. You know, I mean, she was there, you know, walking, whatever, but like, I don't know. And um, that was, those, those are kind of like the big things. Of course, a lot of uh, stars were there and reality TV stars, but like, I don't know. It feels weird. Am I mean, the only one? Let me know in the comments below. What do you feel about, you know, Coachella and everything that, you know, we have been seeing over there? All right, let's talk a little bit about Love is Blind. Um, so Megan Fox is finally, finally reacting to the viral moment of Chelsea from Love is Blind saying that she often get mistake uh, by, you know, Megan Fox everywhere she goes, you know? And then how Chelsea got basically destroyed by the internet by saying, like, not even in your wildest dreams, you will look like Megan Fox. But I think a lot of people are really fixating on the fact that, you know, Megan Fox is way thinner, you know, you know, and, and very petite, right? But girl, if you really, like, pay attention, and the worst part is, like, Chelsea literally said it on the show. She's like, don't get too excited. It's just because I have blue eyes and I have uh, black long hair. And if you really look at that angle, you can tell, I mean, I will never say that's Megan Fox because to me, it will have to be like the whole thing. Or I don't know, like, I mean, it, it's a little bit weird, but it's still nothing that weird to be attacked like she did online, you know? And I, that was one of the things that uh, Megan Fox said, you know? Because Megan Fox, actually, she has not, um, she has not um, watched the show. You know, but everyone is asking her about it and it really is crazy. So, okay. So she's actually backing up Chelsea. You know, she's actually saying like that she also doesn't understand why it would be such a bad thing to say that. Uh, she says, I did see a picture of her. A hundred thousand percent people have told her you kind of look like Megan Fox. Uh, Fox noted that she believed Blackwell was telling the truth when she confessed to Jimmy in the past that she resembled her, you know? Um, and then she ended up saying, I hope, like, she still have that sparkle in her eye because I, she has been bullied and I hope the world didn't steal it from it's just like people were so ruthless over it, you know? And we all know when that, where that ruthless was coming from, okay? It was basically people trying to tell her, like, uh, you are bigger, you will never be like Megan Fox. But if you would really literally put that aside, it could really be, you know? Like, her eyes are very, very much similar, you know? So, like, I could definitely kind of, like, very see it. I, I wouldn't put it, you know, on my presentation card, but I could see how someone might tell her that, you know? I don't think she's being stopped at the airport and being like, can I get your autograph, Megan Fox? I just think that people, you know, are going around saying like, oh, you know, you remind me to Megan Fox. I think that was the whole thing, you know? We have been talking about this for so long <laughs> that at this point it's like insane. But the fact that Megan Fox is now finally, I think, like, opening up and saying, like, let the bitch alone, you know, like, let her live a little bit. I think it's uh, it's something that it's really worth it, uh, especially now that she is, you know, going through, like, a whole things with, um, um, what is the Machine Gun Kelly, you know, and all of that. Uh, they talked to her also about, um, you know, being in a relationship and everything that is going on because there has not been very clear 
where they are. You know, are they together? Are they not together? They have been on and off for so long that people are like really trying to like confuse about their situationship, you know, and she's just going around saying like, you know, uh, women need to just, just like move on, you know, and like kind of like sending my, a cryptic message that everyone is saying that it's for uh, for him, you know, and she says uh, the women just need to move on from men during this summer, you know, and uh, just learn a skill or develop a hobby and do, n do, n do not waste your energy on boys. All they're going to do is drain you, okay? Mm. Then what I've learned from being in this relationship is that it is not for public consumption. She said the other day also, and she said, so I think as for now, I don't have a comment on the status of the relationship per se. I don't know. What do you guys think? Huh? Uh, I feel that they are in a toxic point where they don't know if they should move forward or they should just like stay um, where they are. But their relationship has definitely been interesting over the years. You know, and I don't know. Maybe run its course. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. We'll... All right, guys. So um let's take a little left and let's go into the royal avenue okay because apparently megan marco will not go to london until she got an official apology from the royals girl this i mean this is so messy that i cannot i cannot understand it sometimes as you know, there is a lot of talk because Prince Harry is set to go to UK for the Invictus Games. I think it's the 10th, an 10th anniversary, right? And he's supposed to be there. And there is a lot of talk because apparently, allegedly, Prince Harry actually wants to rehash the whole situation, you know? And he wants to, like, find closure and forgive, you know? And, like, get back to his family somehow. The reports are that King Charles is extensive and an olive branch, you know, and he wants to bring the whole family together and bring Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and the kids, you know, and get together with Prince William and Kate Middleton, you know, and giving everything that is going on with King Charles and Meghan Markle right now. It's kind of like it's the perfect moment to just reunite the family and to find a little bit of love, you know. And Prince Harry, apparently, it's very open to the idea, okay? Apparently, he really, really wants, you know, this to happen. But Meghan Markle is the one who is saying no. No, I will not do anything until they apologize to me. They were horrible to me. And I will not let any of this happen. And Harry is now in the middle of, do I forgive my family or do I support my wife? Um. Okay, so let me read you this before I give you my opinion. But it basically says that uh, Meghan Markle is definitely pushing for an apology from the royal family before she agrees to visit the UK. Okay, uh, it says that I think. Okay, so a royal commenter is saying that I think that she is pushing for an apology and that she's been pushing for that for quite a long time. Although there has been reports from the Sussex camp that she has sort of given up on an apology. I don't think that she is actually blocking him from seeing his family, though. We know that he came to see his dad when his dad was ill. And we know that he is coming over again in May. Harry will like a reconciliation but support his wife completely and until she feels that the royal family has been sufficiently nice to her and grovingly apologized for the past, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been a shift since Kate's illness. Harry and Meghan do feel they need to extend an olive branch, but Meghan's sense of grievance is still preventing anything really meaningful uh, happening. Illness often bring warring family members together and there has been hopes at Kenningstone Palace that Kale illness will might do that. 
Well, this is what I think when it comes to this. Uh, and I will say this on every video probably. But I feel that they need that there's need to be accountability from both sides. Okay, I think there needs to be an apology also from both sides. Uh, I feel that, you know, I feel that, um, wait, I'm sorry, guys. I feel that um, Megan's feelings are valid, you know, because she's the one who went through the experience. But the way that they deal with those feelings were definitely not the best way, you know. So it definitely, they definitely need to find themselves in the middle. I'm not saying that the royal family is like completely innocent in all of this. Something definitely happened for to to trigger that kind of reaction from Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, you know. So like it's not about one, one side taking one hundred percent of the blame. I feel that a conversations need to be made. I think accountability needs to happen from both of them, and then find a place to forgive, right? But you cannot tell someone that their feelings are not valid. However. We do have to understand that feelings are not facts, you know? So we really need to find a happy medium. And I think that's what it needs to happen. Um, it's not going to be easy, it's, it, it, you know, for Prince Harry to lose his family like this, you know? At the end of the day, this is your dad. This is your brother. You know, these are your nephews and, and, and nieces, you know? This is your real, like, your family that you grow up with. So, and... Uh, so what I'm thinking is Prince Harry needs to also find that happy medium, you know. I think he could, like, support his wife and have a relationship with, her, with uh, his family at the same time, you know. I think if you are adult and mature enough, you can actually do both, right? Um, but let's wait and see. Now, I don't, if, if they're going to wait... If Meghan Markle is really waiting for an apology, those kind, those are the kind of like petty things that happen that, you know, end up on families really breaking up, you know, because then they could say like, what, why do we have to apologize? You know, and if you, if you don't, if you are not face to face to really have a conversation and everything is to like uh, mediators or letters or like rumors or whatever, you will never find the right words or the right things to say or do to fix this relationship, you know? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to this, you know, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of you, you know, want me to take one side or the other, but I'm very much in the middle, you know, because I kind of, like, can see both points. I mean, I think by being outside of, you know, the UK and like not really being biased at all. I think I'm 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 able to like really look at both sides, you know, and kind of like give like an unbiased opinion, you know. So that's what I'm thinking right there. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think about about this? Do you think that Mega needs to get an apology before she you know meet with them? What do you think? Well, let me know. All right, guys, with that, we are leaving the pop culture streets, but don't go anywhere because it is time for our breaking news. <laughs>